Body cameras are now on. Body cameras are now on. Body cameras are now on. Okay, no. Our body cameras are now filming. I'm letting you know. You see right there? You see that behind you? You can record. Ma'am, we're asking you to leave. You're not leaving, and you're not allowed to record. Turn around. Turn around. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Leroy Truth for Leroy Truth Investigations. And recording the police in the course of their daily duties shall help us to hold them accountable and keep us free. I have a mission. Today's story, incredibly disturbing. And my number one mission is to stop the illegal and unconstitutional and disrespectful policy that the New York Police Department, the NYPD, has been allowed to get away with since 2018. You're in our our police lobbies. You cannot record us. If you do, I will arrest you. And that is what is happening. Again and again and again. And there's these brave men and women who go into those police stations to file a complaint and they want to document what's going on and to protect themselves. However, Police don't like that. They created this illegal and unconstitutional policy that Mayor Adams has not told them to stop. Follow the law, follow the freedom, respect the right of we the people to keep our government transparent. Today's story, this is insane. 61-year-old woman. Now, she is not an auditor. She is not in the 1A First Amendment community. She is one of regular Americans. She goes into a police station, NYPD police station in Brooklyn, because she had her glucometer stolen. She is a diabetic. She has to test herself at least five times per day. It was stolen. She contacted the precinct. She was told that she could pick up the police report so that she can then get a replacement for that. However, they were not very kind to her. In fact, they were worse than not kind to her when she went in there to retrieve the report that she was told was ready for her to pick up, they wouldn't help her. They wouldn't give it to her. She left the precinct, came back, wanting to protect herself as she has a right to film her interactions with public employees. They didn't like that. So they broke her arm. Watch this. Body cameras are now on. Body cameras are now Okay, no. This is my Our body cameras are now filming. I'm letting you know. You see right there? You see that behind you? You can record. Ma'am, we're asking you to leave. You're not leaving, and you're not allowed to record. You're not allowed to record. Turn around. Turn around. Can you believe that? Now, this is from about a year ago. Not a new story, but it bears retelling because nothing has changed. That is so incredibly criminal what the NYPD police officers did to that woman. They're even telling her they have their body cams on. So what is it? The government can record us, but we can't record the government. She had a right to document her interactions, to protect herself. And look what happened. She was maliciously, viciously attacked. She was conducting business. She had a right to be there. 
they had no right to stop her from recording. But because in 2018, the police got together and said, we're going to create a policy. And we're going to put up signs on copy paper, that cheap old copy paper that says no recording, not allowed. So if the police put up a sign, even though there is no statute behind it, of course, we have to listen as we the people, right? Wrong. If this doesn't make your blood boil and call for action, I have a mission. My mission is to end this illegal and unconstitutional policy of the police not allowing us to see what they're doing, to inter on our interactions that we have with them, whether it's getting the complaint form, whether it's getting a police report of a glucometer meter who was stolen, which was stolen from this woman, and she needs this. It's a matter of life or death for her. And she cannot get it replaced, cannot afford to get it replaced, and she can't get it replaced unless she gets this police report that the police refused to give her initially. And we also have a right to just walk into a police lobby. We have a right to make sure the people are being, the police are being clear and on the up and up with what they do. And they're not. And there are so many videos on YouTube where people are not breaking the law, but they're breaking the NYPD policy which the people don't like, those cops don't like. Police unions support them. Sergeants, lieutenants, captains, police commissioner supports them. Mayor Adams supports them. Well, as Martin Luther King once said, the problem is not that we are outnumbered. The problem is that we are outorganized. And I am organizing and working with other auditors, other constitutional guardians, throughout the country, throughout the nation, throughout the world. And I want to shout out to Sean, Long Island Audits. And I spoke with him for almost an hour the other day. And he has what is necessary. He understands we can't just only create videos. Yes, we need to create videos which exposes the criminal conduct of police and police culture. We also need to work the legal system. And he has an exceptional attorney that is working with them. And we're going to go the legal route. And I'm organizing other auditors. And I'm working with some senators and congressmen and congresswomen to make sure that they respect the biggest, greatest, grandest law of the land that already exists called the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. Let's continue here, give you more details. Now, cops to a 61-year-old as she tried to film them. And Patricia Rodney is her name, and she went to an NYPD precinct in Brooklyn to get a police report for a law school commenter. She ended up instead with a broken arm. How can that happen in America? Maybe in Russia, maybe in Iran, maybe in Iraq, maybe by the Taliban. Not the, by the New York Police Department. Continuing. New York Department officers threw a screaming because she's screaming in pain, screaming 61-year-old grandmother to the ground, breaking her arm in the process of an arrest, captured on video inside a police station in Brooklyn. Her alleged crime, filming the police. The moment you, I, any of us accept what the police are trying to do here, making that a crime, is the end of this representative republic that we're supposed to have here. That's the end of it. I do not accept it. And I will not stop until I end that policy. But I need your help. We need to do this collectively. Because alone we fall, united we stand, we the people. The problem is not that we are outnumbered, it's that we have been outorganized. No more. I'm organizing as well as several other activists and constitutional guardians in the community. Which you are an intrinsic and critical part of. Continuing. The body camera video first reported on the local news blog Hellgate shows Patricia Rodney surrounded by cops before one of them grabs her, takes her to the ground, and handcuffs her, and of course shouts those special words as they're protecting and serving the hell out of her and breaking her arm. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. A little old lady, 61 year old. This is criminal. The only person who broke the law were the police there. And by the way, was there one single good cop there? 
Tell me, identify in this video, was there one single good cop there in this video? The answer is no, of course. Good cops stop bad cops from doing bad things. And unfortunately, when a good cop, and there are some, there are some, they're far and few between, and they usually don't last, because as someone one time asked, what do you call a cop with a conscience who does the right thing? Unemployed. Harassed, assaulted, kicked out, fired, sometimes even unalived. There are good people, but the culture won't allow them to, to stay there. Continuing. Rodney, a diabetic, was visiting the police station on December 2nd, 2020 to pick up a copy of a police report she'd filed about a missing glucometer. As required by her insurance provider so they can provide her with a new one. And she has to check her glucose up to five times a day or more to make sure that she's going to be okay so that she can get the treatment and, and, and for her her blood sugar level, for God's sakes. This is a critical device. We're talking life or death here. But instead of helping Rodney, NYPD officers turned her away. That's before this video started. When she became frustrated and pointed her phone camera toward them, just like this, they didn't like that. The cops grabbed her as she shrieked for help, screamed for help. And who's going to help her? Who's going to protect and serve her? The police weren't protecting and serving her. Who can she call? Can she call 911 and get better cops who are going to protect and serve her? And the answer is no. Even if some other cops came from a different precinct, they would not for one second actually investigate. They would see their fellow thick blue line officers serving and protecting the hell out of her as they break her arm as she shrieks and screams in pain, and they'll just jump on top, not even questioning if it's right or wrong. The reason this case matters is because it shows how far we have gotten from a system where the police do anything except protect and serve. Remy Green, Rodney's attorney, told Vice News, what happened here is the shocking overreaction to a diminutive, tiny little grandmother making the smallest and challenged through their power. She wanted to document what was going on since they turned her away. This is the ultimate in bad customer service. Not only do they turn you away and they won't serve you, but they also will break your arm if you attempt to show the world what an incredibly bad job they are doing. Rodney works at a local school as a cafeteria worker. She is medically required to check her blood sugar at least five times a day. And she needed a copy of the report faxed to her insurer for a replacement glucometer, according to the complaint. Despite being instructed by a cop two days earlier to return for a copy of the report later in the week, she was denied by at least not one, not two, but three different officers, one of whom told her she'd have to go to NYPD headquarters in Manhattan for a copy, even though she had been told she can come to that precinct to pick it up. In body cam footage of the encounter... Rodney is cornered by multiple officers. The complaint says there were at least six. What's that? Like, it's an officer for every 10 years she was alive. So she was 20, it would be 2, 33, 55. She was 61. So they, they must have a formula for this. Six officers for a 61-year-old. If she was 71, break seven. Probably goes to figure. This is my camera, Rodney says, holding up her phone. I'm allowed to film. Well, not according to the NYPD and their 2018 policy. And we are going to end that. Again, I am committed to ending this. Mark my words. We will end this illegal, unconstitutional, violent, unconstitutional and violent policy. Long Island Audit was arrested for recording while he was in the police station attempting to get a complaint for him. Brooklyn Audit was arrested when he went to the station. He, in fact, left the station. He was on the stairs and a lieutenant sicked his animals and they were animals because the lieutenant got upset with something Brooklyn Audit said while he was outside the precinct. precinct. Lieutenant Hernandez, his name is, didn't like it, said arrest him and they viciously arrest him, attacked him. This is my camera, Rodney says, holding her phone up. I'm allowed to film. No truer words have been spoken. What a courageous young woman 
She stood up to the vicious predators called the NYPD. And for anyone who says, oh, you're being too hard on them, right? Did you see this video? And this video is not an anomaly. This is common. If you don't leave after they tell you, the police tell you to stop recording, we're going to get you for trespassing. They will arrest you. And most of the time with prejudice. And just because it's an illegal arrest doesn't mean someone gets off and the charges are dropped. That happened to Sean because they probably recognized who he was. He had legal representation. Many of the people who go to these police stations to attempt to record freedom, they don't have representation. They don't have the money to hire a lawyer. That's why the, the system is so messed up. You need money to get true defense in a criminal proceeding. That's messed up. That's not right. There's no equal justice under the law with that. Continuing. Cops tell her she can't record. With one then pointing to a sign behind Rodney that says, members of the public are prohibited from audio and video recording. So if there's a cheap-ass sign that says no recording, they just make this up, they can also say no men with red ties and a gold magnetic pin and a bald head and a spectacularly handsome face are allowed to come into our NYPD or record audio or video. No one who wears white pants can come in. They can make anything they want. No one who has eaten the worm from a tequila bottle is allowed to record or video us audio or video. They can make anything up. There is no statue behind it. Plus, even if there was, it is unconstitutional. It is our duty, not just our right, but our duty to challenge and end illegal and unconstitutional policies. Because remember, policies have nothing to do with you or me. They can create all the policies for the thick blue line that they want. But they have nothing to do with you or I. They have no bearing on us. We do not have to listen to them whatsoever. Continuing. When a third cop tells Rodney she isn't allowed to record, he immediately grabs her arm. That is called assault, ladies and gentlemen. Just because a guy has a badge and a gun and a fancy uniform doesn't mean it's not a crime. He had no legal authority to do that. Four officers take the 61-year-old who's heard screaming in the video to the ground. You heard it. The cops tell Rodney, who is off camera, stop resisting, stop resisting, and turn around as the arrest continues. I'm a diabetic. That's why I need that paper, Rodney begs, while on the ground sobbing. Could you imagine if that was your mother or your grandmother or your sister or your friend or your sister? I said sister twice, I know. What if that was that those police officers' mother or sister, friend, grandmother? How would they like that? Would they stand by and let it happen? They all let it happen. They all let it happen. There was not one good cop in the mix. Then the cop says, that's it. You're going to jail. The officer who initially grabbed her arm responds, ma'am, all you had to do was cooperate and let us violate your constitutional rights. The officer says, as he, now I gave a little latitude there, but I'm saying what's true there. The officer says, as he lifts her face mask, which fell below her nose during the arrest to cover her nose and eyes, you did this to yourself. How many times have you heard that in domestic abuse? A woman gets physically assaulted, abused, beat up by a husband, a boyfriend. And what does he say? You did this to yourself. These are the ultimate abusers, ladies and gentlemen. Unacceptable criminal. So many people say, well, these cops should be fired. Well, duh. Duh. That's the least of it. Of course, they need to be fired. They also need to be arrested with prejudice. Let them experience what they are doing to the general public and to this sweet 61-year-old 60 year diabetic grandmother. Let them experience that. They should be arrested and charged to the nth degree, including operating under the color of law, which has very, very severe consequences in the extreme. Continuing. Rodney was taken to a local hospital for treatment after the encounter, where she remained handcuffed, according to the lawsuit. 
She had a fractured elbow as well as swelling to both arms, elbows, and wrists, the complaint says. And what the hell is it with these torture cuffs anyway? We should not be using these metal handcuffs except for actual violent offenders. And yes, there are dangerous people in our society, and they need to be taken out of our society. I'm not arguing to defund the police. A complete reboot of the police is necessary. This woman posed no threat. She should not have been in handcuffs. And she had a broken elbow, swollen arms, and the sadistic, predatory nature of police culture allows that to happen, and no one stops it. If you were to come from outer space into this earth and you saw that and didn't know about any laws or constitution, just about being a human, you would say, this is one of the most cruel planets I've ever seen in my life. One of the most cruel interactions between humans. How is that possible? We have to do a major reboot. Insanity. And of course, she was charged with listening to all this. Resisting arrest. Obstructing governmental administration, which I've been arrested for as well, and held a gun to my head, by the way, because I wouldn't give my ID to a police officer who demanded it, and he wouldn't tell me why he wanted it when I was simply parked in a car, in a parking lot. He screams to me, violently screaming to me, give me your ID, license registration, license registration. I'm parked. I, in fact, have a date with me. We're just hanging out. And I keep asking him, why do you want this? If he has a legal reason that he can give me, I will give him my license and registration. There is no moving violation. I am parked. He wouldn't tell me why. And I'm, I kept asking him, why do you want it? So in his authority, comply or die frustration, he takes his gun out of his holster, points it directly to the temple, my left temple of my head with his finger on the trigger. And I'm one eighth inch away from being murdered by a police officer because I had the audacity to exercise my Fourth Amendment right. This woman is doing the same thing. And by the way, I was charged with trespassing and obstructing governmental administration. It's called contempt of cop. Fancy term. I was arrested. My date was arrested. One month later, went to court. The judge asked, like, what the hell are you people doing here? Get out of here. Case dismissed. I didn't know then what I know now. Otherwise, I would have sued them with prejudice. That was 30, over 30 years ago. I've learned a lot since. That was one of my biggest inspirations for getting started into this activism work that I am passionately committed to. Continuing. She was charged with resisting arrest, obstructing governmental administration, disorderly conduct, and criminal trespass, all of which were later dismissed in court. With cops under operate, operate under color of law, they need to be instantly, instantly fired, instantly arrested. A major penalty, major felony, when someone illegally arrests a member of the general public when no crime was committed. They knew no crime was committed. But they were going hands-on fast to the extreme so they could support that policy that they love to tout. No recording in a NYPD lobby. Or you are an other. You're not human. You're subhuman. They did not treat that woman like a human. They treated her worse than they would treat an animal. Now, Rodney is suing and looking for monetary compensation for the emotional damage and physical injuries caused by the arrest. There's no amount of money that can... That can make up for what she she experienced. And here's another problem, is the police officers, they don't pay. They don't care if they get sued because we, the taxpayers, pay the settlements. If the settlements or if it goes to court, whatever the court, uh, the jury or the judge gives there. You know, we, she needs to sue, absolutely, but that's why we have to get rid of qualified immunity. That's why we have to get rid of internal investigations, external investigations. That's why we have to get rid of police unions. Otherwise, nothing changes. And we have to hold everyone accountable. Every manager, every su supervisor, every chief, every captain, every lieutenant, the police commissioner. They are the ones who create that culture, not just the underlings who execute it. Continuing. But the lawsuit also calls into question a controversial NYPD policy around filming the police. Three years ago, the department prohibited recordings inside police precincts. 
They can't do that. They can't make up laws. It's got to be a law. A policy has no bearing on the public. While the merit of the new policy was never officially settled, because it hasn't been challenged, it has not been challenged effectively, New York City Council passed a law in 2020 declaring cops susceptible to legal action if they stop someone from filming police duties. The City Council passed a new law that, at least on its face, completely conflicts with their policy. And the NYPD appears to have done nothing about it. Why? Because they are above the law. They are the original and only sovereign citizens. The law doesn't apply to them. They can't make it up and get away with it. But they have been. It is either something they do not have the power to do because they cannot rewrite city law, or it's unconstitutional because they can't let you rewrite federal law. It's unconstitutional, period. It's not a law. Policies don't apply to us. They can make up any policy. It doesn't apply to us. The NYPD did not respond for a request for comment. As they said in Gomer Pyle from Andy Griffith's show, surprise, surprise, they did not respond for a request for comment. The right to record police is widely accepted as a First Amendment right in the U.S. Over the past 25 years, several U.S. District Courts of Appeal have upheld filming the police as a constitutionally protected form of expression. So long as the person recording the activity isn't directly interfering with police work. But it doesn't mean institutions haven't tried to subvert this right. They do this all over the place. Including in Sheridan, Colorado, which Denver Metro audits DMA and Sweet Tea and... And others are profoundly, passionately challenging that law. And many of them have been arrested and have had their lives upended because of it. Most recently, Arizona. But it doesn't mean institutions haven't tried to subvert this right. Republicans in Oklahoma, Florida, and most recently, Arizona, have passed laws that limit the freedom to record police in some way. Unconstitutional. Eh, Don't pass go. eh, Let it go. Doesn't count. Period. Do we live in the U.S.? Or, or do we not? Is the Constitution actually the highest law of the land, or is it not? It is not like horseshoes. There is no close. It's binary, ones or zeros. It either is the supreme law of the land, or it's not. Without an official ruling from the Supreme Court on the issue, the rules around what's allowed and what isn't are muddier than ever in some states. It shouldn't be muddy. It's not muddy. First Amendment. Freedom of the press. And we all are the press. We don't need press credentials. Period. Freedom to redress our government. We don't need a press credential or a pass or permission slip to do that. The police have no right to demand that we ask permission to do what is a God-given right. Because remember, the Constitution doesn't grant us rights. It simply is supposed to assure the government, the police in particular, will make sure those rights are protected. And by the way, we have to have transparency of the police. If we don't, Things get worse and worse. Look how bad they are now. And how is it we have allowed them to not let us record? And if we do, they arrest us many times with prejudice and injury. How is it that we have given them, the Supreme Court actually gave them qualified immunity? They can't be held personally responsible for anything criminal they do in the course of their duty. How do we let them create internal investigations? They have the power to kill us legally. Yet when they do, or they harass, assault, or illegally incarcerate us, they get to investigate themselves. Look at it from as an extraterrestrial from another planet comes here. Does this make any sense to you whatsoever? This is insanity. This is called a police state, ladies and gentlemen. We play a free country on TV. Unless we get rid of qualified immunity. External investigations only. Get rid of police unions. Make sure that they are upholding the rights that they swore an oath to protect. Unless they do those four things, as well as demilitarize the police. We don't live in a free country. Anyone is delusional who thinks we do when those things are still in place. Green hopes that a decision in their client's case will provide some much-needed clarity on the matter in New York City. Again, it doesn't need clarity. It's in the Constitution. It's insane. In New York City, what is and isn't allowed to be recorded appears to be unclear, even to its leaders, because the leaders don't protect and serve us. They protect and serve themselves. And by the way, when it comes to politicians, 
what's a politician without the police? A person with a lot of dumb ideas. That's it. That's all they are. In March, speaking of dumb ideas, Mayor Eric Adams asked New Yorkers to either stand further back from cops from recording them or invest in a new phone to better capture those Kodak moments. The suggestion was widely panned because the mayor failed to present examples of people being too close to an arrest while documenting it. And the fact is, and it was a great story by Chris Glorioso from NBC Channel 4 New York City News. I'll include a link in the description here. And he did an investigative report. He's a phenomenal investigative journalist. And he found there was a profound increase in the amount of people the NYPD was arresting who were recording them. And they say, well, people are getting in our face. No one is getting in their face. Show me. Show me a single video of someone getting in a police officer's face or actually interfering, which is a physical act in the course of what they're doing. And even if there's one or two, I, don't, I haven't seen any, but even if there's a few, that doesn't, that doesn't say get rid of the Constitution. Yeah, I agree. If someone actually physically interferes with the police doing the course of legal duty, I would be the first to say, get out of there. They need space. But we could be at a reasonable distance, absolutely, and record transparently, transparently what they're doing. I am Leroy Truth for Leroy Truth Investigations. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please ask your friends to subscribe. I have a goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers by July 1st and beyond, so our reach could be even stronger. And also, make sure to call Senator Schumer and Senator Tim Scott. Tell them you are demanding that they create police reform. The phone calls do matter. Don't dismiss this. They do matter. They're not the only thing, but they are a thing you could do right now. The numbers are here. Call the Washington, D.C. office, Senator Charles Schumer, Senator Tim Scott. I am Leroy Truth. I appreciate you. Thank you for your support. Until next time, stay tuned for my next video.